Hi everyone and welcome back to day two of AHIP Institute and Expo. We're here at the Guidewell Connect Insights Lounge. My name is Kate Warnock. Everyone, we have a very distinguished guest here at the lounge. I want to welcome you to Ms. Marilyn Taverner. Marilyn, Thank welcome you. to the interview. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So Marilyn, of course, is the CEO and president of America's Health Insurance Plans, or AHIP, of course. So Marilyn, let's get into your questions. Health plans are actively working to help consumers understand and use their benefits. What do you see as the biggest change from your members in terms of their approach to engaging with consumers around their health choices? I think what we've seen is that consumers are much more interested, and I think part of that is the issue of more exposure to co-pays and deductibles. Sure. So they want to understand what services they're receiving at what price. And so our plans are trying to meet them in terms of technology, uh, whether it's portable technology, mobile devices, or whether it's just access on the internet, or more upfront information, more approach with the consumer before they actually engage in their health care. You know, we've had so many of your, your speakers come and share their thoughts with us, and so much of what they're sharing is the importance to be just transparent, as you said, you know, and to keep it simple, you know, and, and to help improve hopefully that level of health literacy. And that's really what it comes down to. You don't, you don't know what you've got if you don't understand even how to read what it is. That's right. And one of the things that we're doing is what's called a provider directory pilot, because one of the biggest areas of confusion is who's my physician? What drugs, what prescriptions can I get filled? Which hospitals can I use? So we actually have a pilot underway in several states, including Florida, Indiana, and California, to help make it easier to understand for the consumer and for the physician and for the provider. Absolutely, and, and what a, a good thing. If, if anything, that is probably the first thing that a member is going to check is, is my doctor in network? And if yes. they discover that they thought when they purchased their plan that the provider no longer is when they want, go to use their benefits, it certainly creates that, that friction point that no one wants to have to go through. Absolutely. Right. You so, want to know up front, absolutely. not after the fact. So that's the right kind of pilot to run. We're so glad that AHIP is involved with that. All right, so Marilyn, obviously with your distinguished background, what was it about the AHIP leadership position that you found most attractive after leaving office in 2015? Great question. I'd say there were two things. One is the access issue. AHIP has been very influential with the government and with the private sector in making sure there's coverage for individuals. And the second has to do with the issue of delivery system reform, moving from an old fee-for-service model to coordination of care, and actually looking at quality and outcomes and cost. And I think it's that affordability, access, and quality issue that really attracted me to AHIP. And how fortunate for them to have you again with, with how instrumental you were in, in crafting where we are today with, with health care reform Thank to have you. you in this role. So lovely. So you opened the 2016 AHIP Institute yesterday addressing the future of health care and plans leading the way. What were your top points? I think the top points that I wanted to make is that Plans have a big presence in both Medicaid and Medicare Advantage, so they have natural, strong working relationships with government. So we need to take that and actually partner with government, get more proactive with government, and help make the transition from fee-for-service to, to delivery system reform or to a coordinated care model as quickly and as easy as possible for the consumer, for the employer, and for those who are on Medicare and Medicaid. You know, I think what's fascinating is to see exactly the role that government is playing in, in kind of disrupting the whole way that we are delivering care. Yes. It's, it's really such an exciting time to be in this space and, and to see the leadership that we're getting from, uh, from, from government players. It's, it's really a, a fantastic time. I agree. And, and I think, you know, a lot of the work around Medicare and Medicaid has been around just getting coverage to individuals. And now that we've dealt with some of the getting, reducing the number of uninsured, it's time to deal with the quality. It's time to deal with coordination of benefits. And secondary to that, we'll also deal with the cost and the affordability, whether we're talking about pharma or whether we're talking about medical services. So it's a good time to be in healthcare. You know, and, and if anybody takes a peek at your agenda or folks who are lucky enough to be here, you've convened all the right players who are really addressing the tangible way to make that, that needle move forward. So again, yes. a wonderful place to be. All right, our final question for you, Marilyn. In the post-2016 election season, what should either administration prioritize as the top healthcare industry concerns? 
Well, I think regardless of whether we end up with a Republican or a Democratic president, the issue of affordability and access are going to remain front and center. And there's a lot of bipartisan effort and agreement in Congress about delivery system reform, about coordination of care, about high quality services based on outcome, and a movement away from volume to value, and I think that will continue. Right. Well, that's good to hear, and I know, again, under your aegis, a hip will continue to help show the way. So, my name is Kate Warnock. We've been so lucky to have you, Marilyn, here you, at the Guidewell Connect Insights Lounge. I know that we're going to be up in just a moment with our next interview. Please keep watching. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. It.